Well, joining us now to discuss these major events in Iran is Iranian dissident and investigative journalist Potkin Azama, who has been active in fighting against the Islamic Republic for many years already. Potkin, thank you so much for joining us. Just to start, do you think, what do you think, excuse me, is important that the public in America knows about Raisi and who he really was? Good about you, Emily. Yeah, um, he was known as the Butcher of Tehran. Uh, in 1988, when the Iranian political uh, prisoners, mostly left-wing prisoners, uh, were massacred, he was named by a dissident Ayatollah Montazeri as one of the five main judges that were presiding through these kangaroo courts. Most of these prisoners, they'd uh, finished their sentences. They should have been released. But the regime was scared of releasing them because the war ha had ended and obviously there were problems, shortages and that after the war. And they were afraid that these activists would then lead an uprising against the regime. So they decided to massacre them, even though their prison sentences had ended. And there were no protests anywhere in the world about it. No one even knew about it. I don't even think Amnesty issued a statement about it. And he was one of uh, one of those judges. And in the short term, short time that he's been the president, he's been a laughing stock of most of the Iranians. He's come across as very uneducated. He's only really got seminary education. He uh, he had difficulties reading numbers. He was coming up with words that were not in the vocabulary. Um, it was, it was an ideal uh, candidate for uh, a lot of the uh, 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 comedy posts on Iranian social media, etc. And continues to be, even today. Now, does his death and what happened yesterday, does it give you any hope as an Iranian? And why or why not? Um, no, not much, because um, the president in Iran is not really an important uh, position. The, everything is decided by the supreme leader. It's the supreme leader that... Uh, uh, besides the major policies. Um, until he's alive, he can hold the different factions together. But um, when he uh, uh, dies, then uh, I expect a more intense power struggle. I mean, we have internal power struggle within the regime all, all the time. Um, every now and again, we go through a period of um, uh, purges and internal power struggles. But the, the real intense one will come, come, come about after the Supreme Leader not after the president. The president is not really important. Presidents come and go and the, the, the major policies uh, don't change. We are running out of time, but I just yeah. wanted to hear from you. What do you anticipate will happen on the ground in Iran now? I know there, there will be an interim president and an election within 50 days. What do you expect will happen, if anything new? So, yeah, so the, uh, the vice president will take over as the interim president for 50 days and then he's tasked with holding uh, so-called elections, if you could call them elections in the Islamic Republic, to decide the next president. Um, the, uh, on the more immediate uh, uh, front, uh, what I see is that the majority of Iranians seem to be celebrating. I mean, um, there must be some uh, Iranians who, who will be sad, but if we judge anything by the uh, level of participation in the last second round of the parliamentary elections. Only 3 to 5%, 3% in larger cities, 5% in rural areas participated in elections. And that's about, that's a good poll of like how much support the regime has amongst the population. Maybe 3% of the population will be, uh, um, you know, grieving or something. But I think the vast majority of Iranian populations, if they're not celebrating, I don't think they'll be upset. All right, Potkin, thank you so much for your time and for your critical insights on these breaking events. Thanks, Emily.